Welcome to Starto. Joining us tonight is Carly Glogi with Oobly. That's right. Carly. So we have this little toy here. Why don't you go ahead and tell our viewers what we're looking at? Uh, so this here is Oobly. Uh, this is a prototype. And what it was is a toy that's powered by your iPhone or iPod Touch. OK. So everything's driven by voice interaction. So stories, interactive games, uh, choose your own adventure uh, activities. And this really was inspired by Teddy Ruxpin yeah. back in the 80s and the teddy bear and AI. Sure. And the way how it came about was my husband and I had been making iOS apps for about a couple years. Yeah. And we kept on thinking about this concept. We were like, why are toys so, so lame when there's devices like the iPhone out there? Right. And last August, we started prototyping and making it real. So how does this work then? So I see a zipper at the top. Yep. So, yeah, so there's an iPhone or an, an iPod? OK. Yeah, so you just take the iPhone or iPod touch and slide it in there. And we actually put like a silicone filling in there so it's protected. So if your kid wants to huck it across the room, it's going to be OK. Chuck it, you know, go yeah. wrong. Got yeah. it. <laughs> that was a common request from parents. So I see a little face on here. So then this, you just push this and uh, Yeah, just hold it there. And I'll wake up. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Hi. <laughs> what do you want to do? Play a game. All right. Last night, an animal escaped from the zoo. Several people in the neighborhood saw it escape down the street, <laughs> and they have offered to help us figure out what it was. One person said that he thought it was a horse, and another person said he thinks it had stripes. But he couldn't see it very well in the dark. So to turn it off, you just the hold the face again, and, the and, and it'll go <laughs> to sleep. It makes a yawning noise <laughs> while you're doing it. All right, I'm sold. So t talk to me a little bit about how, how you got this thing to market. So from what I understand, you guys crowdfunding this concept, correct? Yep. So tell me about how that happened. So we were planning on launching on Kickstarter uh -huh. uh, to crowdfund. And we really saw that as validation rather than we didn't necessarily need to crowdfund for, you know, just for money. We really wanted to make sure that people would and pay how for much, this. And how much did you guys raise? Uh, 28000 with 20, a goal 000. of 25000 Awesome. Congrats. Yeah. Thank Congrats. you. Thank you. So you're talking about validation. So explain that to me. So you were asking for $25,000, but you said you were looking for validation. What do you mean? Well, you know, it's really hard to stand up in front of investors and say, I think that people will pay for this. Uh, it's a whole lot easier to say we had 30, 30, dollars of pre-orders to date, so people are paying for this, and they're even waiting to get it. Right uh, in the toy market, that's almost unheard of. So hold on, thirty thousand in pre-orders. Thirty thousand dollars in pre-orders. Yeah. And these go for how much? Twenty-nine ninety-nine. Um, we actually wow. were selling them for fifty dollars on Kickstarter, and just recently lowered our price. Wow. Uh, so we ended up telling our Kickstarter people, uh, you know, we were able to get our pr production costs down. So now we're selling it for twenty nine ninety nine, and we just gave them an extra toy or T-shirt. Yeah. And they totally supported it, supported us. So yeah, yeah. I'm happy. I pay a hundred dollars for this thing. This thing's <laughs> awesome. <right? laughs> it's interesting. So far, we've realized that men are willing to pay more than women. So really? Uh, yeah. Really? If you could convince all your lady friends that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that they should pay more. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, so, so. You, you, so you, it goes, share goes. So you go on the Kickstarter, you put a campaign together, you raise $28,000, you get $30,000 in pre orders, you go to an investor and you, you successfully raised around. Is that what I hear? Yeah, yeah. So we just finished that up this week. And I also heard something about Techstars. Yeah, so actually we went on Kickstarter earlier because Techstars said, you know, you got to do this now instead of waiting another month. So we didn't really feel ready, but we did it anyways. Uh -huh. um, it worked out. And what lessons did you learn doing that? Uh, Techstars is crazy. Techstars <laughs> is crazy. No, I mean, I, I'm really glad we did. You know, they're always pushing you to release your product when you're a little bit uncomfortable, and yeah. I'm glad we didn't wait. Uh, interestingly enough, 80% of our orders on Kickstarter were for men. So we really, really realized that women still prefer to purchase in store. Uh, and we had conversations around that as well. Uh, See, and I can totally agree with that because I hate going to stores. Really? I hate grocery shopping. <laughs> I'll eat out as much as I can. I'll, I'll drop off dry cleaning and pick it up in a drive-through. I hate going into places. You sound like me. 
Yeah, yeah, well, see, there you go, right? <laughs> yeah, right, right, yeah right. I'm kind of like a nerdy guy when it comes to that kind of thing. Yeah, cool. Well, hey, you know, I, I, I think we're, you're onto something here with this toy. Then, So what else did you learn, you know, from this, this program? Uh, from Kickstarter or yeah, from? from both. From, from Kickstarter both? Kickstarter from Techstars. Well, I'm only a week and a half into it at Techstars. Uh -huh. um, and for that program, I'm really realizing that you have to be careful about assumptions. There's a lot of things that we were assuming and mentors said, why? Why, why do you think that's the way it's going to go down? Give me, give me an example. Hmm. Um, one of the ones that we thought would be more viable was uh, uh, licensing this. Mm -hmm. So we went in with a story saying, well, we plan on licensing this because, you know, we're not a toy company. We can't make this, this product that everyone knows about and be a big brand. And they said, why? Right. Why not? You already have people paying for it. Yeah. And I think we realized that we were just kind of giving the an easy answer there. And they really challenged us, and that's really driven a mini pivot, I would say. Well, we're almost out of time. Uh, but what I wanted to do is just, just leave on, a, on a, a really cool note. And what piece of advice can you give to an entrepreneur who's watching this show, and they've seen you successfully raise money, create market validation, raise seed capital and get into one of those te coveted accelerating programs in the United States. Don't wait. Don't, I, I, I can't say it enough, don't wait until you feel like it's totally perfect and ready to release. Release when you're a little bit uncomfortable and things will work out in the end. Excellent. Well, Carly, thank you for your time. Best thank of luck you. to you. Appreciate it.